Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul, happy to be joining with you today. And it is uh, Tuesday, it is January 9, 2017. Very grateful that you've taken the time out of your day to come and join me. Today I'm going to be focusing on a subject that I hope will connect with a lot of people. And that is the subject of trust with the Divine Creator. There are quite a few of us who have lost trust. Some of us who question, does a design, Divine Creator exist? And more. And so today we're going to focus on that. <clears throat> and I'm just going to be following flow, kind of go wherever the guidance takes me. But I'm sure uh, it will take me in the right directions. And one of the things that, um, that we may do is I'll invite some, uh, some of you to comment if you've had any major trust issues with the divine, with God, with your creator. <coughs> <coughs> and then maybe I'll do some flows for you that can assist you with um, um, healing that hole. Because sometimes a major hole can happen in our heart when uh, trauma occurs or something like that. <clears throat> and we don't quite know how to realign ourselves to to the source. So we'll we'll work with that depending on guidance. <clears throat> I swallowed water um, incorrectly a little while ago, so it took me a couple minutes to recover from that. So um, welcome to everybody that's joined so far. We'll let the let the uh, uh, Facebook live stream continue to grab some more folks out there. <clears throat> how many of you? attended yesterday's live stream. Was that a good one or not, huh? Forgiveness, mantra, chanting, and calligraphy practice for financial flourishing. That was a good one. I got to tell you guys, if you missed that, go back, watch it. If you watched it, do it again. Especially go to the part where there was a practice because the practice is where we did the deep forgiveness. The practice is where all of the the uh, blessings are coming and there were some big ones offered yesterday and it's key it's key to do it every day so if you miss that I encourage you to go back and do that practice again it will make a significant difference the key is consistency you must do a real consistent practice <clears throat> you can't do it once a week and think it's going to make much of a difference it'll make some difference but probably not anything overly noticeable. So I encourage those who missed it to go back and see it and those who saw it to uh, download that video. <clears throat> um, now some of you might do better with audio or podcasts. Uh, at the end of this week, I take the videos down and I turn them into podcasts and I place them on my website under my, my blog. And so if you go to my website, which is listed above the video, <coughs> excuse me, then you can go uh, to the blog area and you can put it on any one of the, the blog apps uh, you can ask to have it come to your email there's a variety of ways in which you can receive it via audio if that's what your preference is okay so do know that that's available and let's check in with who's joined us so far today aloha heather houston welcome also kathy arnold uh, aloha and welcome susan rossman welcome tammy J. <clears throat> and aloha to Larissa and Kristen Strachan. Welcome, uh, Vanessa. Welcome also to Nelson. And aloha and welcome to Donna Boana. Aloha, NNC. Welcome, Shaz. Uh, aloha, Tiffany Ann. And welcome also to Julia Samaistra. Aloha, Janice. And welcome also to, uh, to Don Robinson. Welcome, Angie Kenny. Welcome, M.A. Drade. Aloha, Jennifer Crest Smith. Jojo, welcome, Jojo. Welcome, Dakota. <coughs> and welcome to anybody else that I may have missed. Thank you for joining. <coughs> Thank you also for hitting the share button, letting other people know about this. So let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. <coughs> Placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. We drop the left hand in front of the heart center. Let us connect. Dear our beloved divine creator, all layers of the Divine, the Tao, and the Source. 
Dear the soul of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, and saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas. <coughs> beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Nam Amitofu, beloved Kuan Yin, all the beings of light serving the planet of the light side, including stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, and beloved Mother Earth, we love you all, honor you all, appreciate you all. I bow my head to each and every one of you. <coughs> Excuse me. I invite you to please be with us today to assist with this guidance and this wisdom. Help us to have a better understanding and how we can further trust the divine. Please bless us to open our hearts more to our original creator, original creation. Help us to awaken from this sleep that we are in to realize that we are the souls and that we are here for a purpose. Please help us to awaken to the oneness that we are and more. <clears throat> we are very grateful for any and all of the blessings that we have ever received in all time. Do the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes. We love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you. We ask you to please be present at this time. We ask that as appropriate, you please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to chant with us the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. So let us chant together to connect heart to heart, soul to soul, to release blockages, prepare for today. <coughs> Excuse me. Lu la lu la li Lu la lu la la li Lu la lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la Wo ai wo xin er ling Wo ai tran ran li Wang li rong er nu shir shang Xiong ai ping on her she Xiong ai ping on her she I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <clears throat> Excuse me. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So welcome, everybody. Welcome also to Lisa Zarniak. Welcome, Dakota. Welcome, Jojo. Welcome also, Lorraine. And welcome, Don Brown. If I missed you, please forgive me. Thank you also for hitting the share button, letting other people know about today. So, as... In most days, when I tune in to um, what will be the teaching for today, I just ask Kevin, what will be the teaching for today? And the message was the title of this show, relating to why we are separate from divine. How, can, how are we disconnected? How can we be more connected? What are the blockages that occur? Now, there's so many possibilities of how and why this occurs. Welcome Danta, welcome also uh, Judy Parker. <clears throat> the vast majority of the separation occurs because we are souls that incarnate into a physical body and we are wiped clean, so to speak, of our previous recollections. We go through life having a series of experiences, sometimes wonderful mothers and fathers, sometimes not so wonderful, sometimes wonderful schools and school teachers and school friends, and sometimes very unpleasant ones, sometimes pleasant relationships, husbands, wives, lovers, and sometimes ones that create great suffering in our life. 
Sometimes we have major health conditions and sometimes we're perfectly healthy. Sometimes we have loved ones that depart before we're ready to let them go and that brings great trouble. <clears throat> and so in every case, we all have a varying degree of awakening and awareness of who is our creator and what is our relationship to our creator. And in every case, unless we have great recollection from our soul's perspective, our soul's awareness uh, to original creation of our soul, then we are stuck with what has been taught us and with what we have accepted as true. So from the age two, three, four, five, we are definitely earlier than that, but we are um, gathering information. We are basing our truths, our beliefs, and our understandings on everything that we've ever thought, everything that we've ever heard and agreed to, everything we've ever witnessed and agreed to. <clears throat> and we've built a belief system based on those sources of information. That belief system then becomes uh, our measurement tool. So when we hear something from somebody else on television, we measure it against our belief system, our understanding. When I say belief system, I'm not referring to religion, I'm referring to understanding of everything as a whole. <clears throat> Every piece of information that enters our field runs through this understanding of life, runs through this um, paradigm that we have set up as our individual truth. Welcome Susan Gottfried and um, welcome also to Wow Trude. Welcome uh, Pamela. So your truth is quite a bit different than mine. Uh, your truth is different even than your mother's or father's and different than your children's is different than your best friends. But we received a lot of our, our understandings and comprehensions from our mothers and fathers and we tend to pass those on to our children. Why is ours different than our parents if they're the ones that taught us? <clears throat> because along the way we received information that changed what we were taught. We received information that altered pieces of it. We had a hundred percent belief and then something changed that hundred percent and it altered it to maybe a uh, sixty percent and then we added a different forty percent over here and then through life these percentages get um, adjusted so that whatever happens in our life, no matter what we hear, what we see, what we think, no matter what happens, we have a way to deal with it that allows us to remain sane and capable of moving through life. So there are many things that can happen that can challenge our belief in the divine creator. <clears throat> Some people literally grew up in a cult in, in darkness. And so their perspective is very, very twisted. Some people, they lost a sibling when they were young. And so it changes their perspective on who is God. Uh, some people are taught things that are partial beliefs, uh, partial understandings of what happens when um, an animal dies, for example. And children have animals and then it dies and we're, we're given a story. And sometimes we accept it, sometimes we don't. <coughs> There are, I have no idea how many different religions are out there, but very few of them are in agreement with each other. Very, very, very few. Let's just say there's a hundred, which is a lo very low number. It's probably closer to a thousand different religions. But let's just say there's a hundred. Imagine that one acknowledges and accepts all of them, and the other 99 are in complete disagreement. This could not possibly be what our original creator was interested in accomplishing. Um, so everything that I share is again just a perspective and it happens to be one that I have received over the course of time through all of the efforts that I've made to try to understand who is the creator? How can we be separate from the creator? How can we realign to the creator? What can I do to fill the hole in my heart if I'm separate from the creator? <clears throat> so I will offer pieces of wisdom that, uh, that I have received over time that may or may not assist you. The first piece is in order to get the most out of this life, acknowledge that you have a soul. 
Because when you acknowledge that you have a soul and that the soul lives forever and you do not, you can start to make life a lot less suffering. This morning I received a text. <clears throat> and the text said, and I, it wasn't accidental. There's no accidents. I, I placed this um, live stream out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I deeply apologize for having to cough loudly. I'd rather clear at once. Um, I thought it was very interesting that I got this text after I posted this Facebook live stream that I was going to be talking about. And the person said, Master Paul, um, do I have to go through a lot of suffering before God accepts me? This was the, the question. And I kind of raised my eyebrow. I'm like, wow, why would anybody think that? But the answer is, because that's what their belief systems and everything that's ever entered our life since birth has taught them to believe. We all have a variation of how we might respond to that answer. <clears throat> I gave her an answer, which I'll share with you in a little bit, and it may or may not work for you. The key piece of the information is that we started out as a soul. We started out as a piece of the whole. We will end up as a piece of the whole. The one creator that created all things is the same one creator that created you and me. And when that one creator made us, he did not make you opposite of me where we argued and had issues with each other's belief systems. <clears throat> In the instant of our creation, we were all exactly pure and clear like our original creator. Again, what I've come to understand. Accept it, don't accept it whatever's good and best for you. But given that this is what I've come to understand, if we can put our focus there and start to see this entirety of this life through a higher, bigger perspective, you have the chance and the opportunity to rise above how life may have brought itself to you, how life may have created a great deal of suffering, how you have allowed yourself to receive life as suffering. Because life is only suffering if we allow it to come to us as such. How do we change that? Yeah, but this happened to me and that happened to me and this person did that to me and da 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 okay? How many people want to write a book? We all want to write a book. Why? We want to lament on our sufferings. We want to tell the world just how awesome uh, our life has been, how we somehow come through all the sufferings or, or whatever it might be. Um, and a lot of that's just to get it off our chest, like, man, I can't believe I survived this. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a survival. It can be looked at through the eyes of how a truly enlightened being would look at it. How would an enlightened being look at it? They would look at everything has cause and effect. Everything has a point of origination. This is part of my response to this, this uh, woman this morning. And what I said to her was, uh, re to remind you of her question, she asked, do I have to suffer before God uh, starts connecting with me and forgives me? And my answer was, no, absolutely not. There is no need for suffering whatsoever. In fact, the, the way the question was worded to me, it was assumptive that God is a mean God, that God is a judgmental God. It was assumptive that in order to receive our Creator's love, we had to go through a variety of layers of suffering. We had to lose people that were close to us. We had to uh, uh, have our house stolen from us. We had to have blah, 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 blah. The assumption is that we're sinners or that we're bad, that we've done something uh, to deserve all of this and that God won't give me love until I have achieved all that. And so I said, well, the, the assumption from my understanding is wrong from the get-go. You have to change your original perspective. We are all soul first. And I shared with her that as a soul, as a pure speck of light from the very beginning of time that had zero impurity, we were given the option of choice. We were given the option of free will. We were given the option of choose left, choose right. 
choose to do this, choose not to do that. And given choice, our Creator was able to expand its experience. Wow. Huh. What happens when we go left? What happens when we go right? Experience. Understanding. <coughs> In those choices, from the beginning of creation, we have made choices, some positive, some negative. And that is the source of the suffering that we experience. That is the source of the reasons why everything occurs. The stuff that we can see and can't see. Things happen all the time that we simply don't comprehend, don't understand, and it just drives us crazy. It separates us from our source creator. Oftentimes those things are related to someone passing over or crossing or a car accident that debilitates us health-wise. We lose a job because of some strange and foreign thing. But cause and effect is the beginning of everything. Cause and effect is yin and yang. Cause and effect originated when we uh, made that first choice as a soul to do something not in alignment with our, with our um, original soul self. <clears throat> so from that original moment, we have all been trying to fix those imbalances. If we understood that, and if we saw everything that has happened, happened to us, because it wasn't, we didn't do it right, it happened to us, it was out of our control. This is the previous perspectives we have to let go of. In order to align ourselves to Creator, in order to um, move away from suffering, and to fill the gap between us and Creator, to trust our Creator, we have to recognize that the Creator didn't cause our problems. In order to trust the Creator, we have to move to the point of recognizing that the uh, glasses that you're wearing and the glasses that I'm wearing are very unique to us. The glasses color the way we look at the world. They color the way we hear a piece of information. They color the, uh, the way we respond to a suffering. The glasses that we wear are literally the metaphor of how, how life has been taught to us. We come in, we're a blank slate, life is taught to us by all those around us. We accept this, don't accept that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It creates the tent that we look through. It creates the way we respond and react to everything. Your glasses are unique to you, mine are unique to me. We have to literally be willing to take off those glasses, to look backwards and say, are any of these things that I've chosen to accept as true, actually true? Are any of these things that have created the me that I am today still serving me? Are any of these things causing me to look at life through suffering eyes? Are any of these things keeping me from trusting my beloved divine creator? And it's hard to move yourself from where you're at to take off the glasses to looking backwards and looking at the way life has brought itself to you through a different set of eyes. So let's say you take off your glasses. Okay, I'm going to look at the five most painful events in my life that I have pointed fingers at from a place of suffering <clears throat> and possibly it has separated me from my Creator, separated me from trusting God. How do we know we're not trusting God? Because we don't talk to God every day. We don't ask, uh, we don't give God credit, whether it's a bad thing or a good thing. We only go to God when something bad happens. So we're not trusting God. We're, we're busy making decisions on our own based on our sunglasses that we're wearing. <clears throat> when we look back at life and we take off the sunglasses of all that has been taught us, and we look at, let's say, one of those major five uh, shifts in your life, major five traumas in your life. I've got to clear my throat again. Give me a second. <coughs> when we go look back at those major traumas, and we look at it differently, <coughs> What do I mean look at it differently? I mean look at it through the eyes of an awakened person. An awakened person would, would go, hmm, 
okay. Well, since everything is cause and effect, there are no accidents. My soul lives forever. I do not. I am the one experiencing this. And when I'm done, my soul is just going to keep on moving forward. My soul is going to grab all these experiences in this life, add them to the others, and just keep moving forward. Okay, if I look at life from this enlightened perspective, <clears throat> what was the cause of that experience? A lot different than what you looked at it before as someone in that painful experience. Why is it important to do this? Because how can you build up your trust in the divine creator? How can you build up your realignment to source if you continue to look through life through tainted glasses? It is important to take them off and start asking harder questions. <clears throat> okay, well, I don't know what caused me to have that car accident, which crippled my back, which caused me to go on disability, which caused me to have financial suffering. I don't know what caused that. But I do know as a soul that is no longer making up excuses that there is a reason. I'm looking at the effect <clears throat> and I'm saying it's that person's problem who ran their car into me. I really, really hate clearing my voice in front of you guys. It's very, very irritating. But it is a form of purification. I apologize. What then can we do about it? We can look at every event instead of from the victim, the person that it happened to, as a person that has risen above it and looks at it from the soul's perspective, looks at it from an enlightened person's or the, even God's perspective, because God does not look at it from your suffering perspective. God looks at it as you are an experiencer. You are someone who has chosen. <clears throat> okay, and see, that's a good question. I'm going to come to that. You're looking at it as a person who has chosen to, um, to uh, ignore cause and effect. <clears throat> so NNC is a student of Master Shah. has been studying for quite a while. She asks a very direct question, a very hard one. So I'm going to do a flow on her question for the answer because it's a hard question. She says, hello, Master Paul. I find it difficult to trust people who keep pointing out it's all your karma as a defense. We are in karma entanglement, not just one person who has karma. We are in a karma entanglement. Yeah. <clears throat> and so she has a problem, for example, and the answer is, well, it's your karma. What do you think I've been saying this whole time? But on the other side of that, it can be like, God, could I really be that bad? I mean, I'm a good person. I've done, I mean, what could I have possibly done to have created this kind of, you know, suffering? So it's very difficult to hear that. So one perspective I want to offer for everybody is, why is it difficult to hear that? Why? Take off the glasses. The reason possibly it is difficult to hear that is because we take it personally. Why do we take it personally? Because of a lack of humility. This could also be taken personally. What do you mean? I have no ego. So again, we get to the layers of taking things personally. Why do we take things personally? Because it is our shade. It is what covers up truths. The enlightened being, the master takes nothing personally. <clears throat> the master can be slapped in the face and says, well, that was interesting. Okay. And they move on. We have to, the reason we, we respond, if somebody says it's your karma, it may be true, it may not be true. The question is, why do we respond um, in a hurtful way, in a hurtful manner? Because we have an attachment to how good we've been doing. Uh, we need that validation. We want to be loved and accepted for who we are. All of this has a very deep root, separation from source. If we had no separation from source, then we would not be hurt by any comment anywhere in time. 
if we had deep connection to source, we would not, uh, if something happened uh, and happened in our uh, experience, we would not judge, criticize, or blame. We would simply be in alignment with source. We'd say, oh, well, there must be some cause and effect going on here. Uh, I'll just send love and work through it. It's not easy. It is a process, but it is a waking up process where we literally have to take off. I keep grabbing my sunglasses so that you see the metaphor. We have to take off the sunglasses of our perceptions and belief systems that have been taught us our whole life. And we cannot necessarily fix what's in front of us and address it in the highest and best way until we look backwards first and address all of those things that we have compartmentalized so that we can deal with them, uh, move through and pass them somehow and, and somehow be present to life. <clears throat> Whatever those things are in the past that have been major traumas, I'm not saying dig up the mud. I'm saying look at them through the eyes of the soul and an enlightened person. They would not see them as this happened to me. They would not see them as that person did this to me. That person took away my, uh, my animal. That person took away my child. This, they would not see it as something by somebody being, happening to somebody. They would see it as a cause and effect event, very detachedly, actually. And it is the detachedness that allows them to see literally the wave of information that led to it and the wave of information that came from it. There was a precursor wave that caused it to happen and there was a wave after it. The precursor wave was the cause. Think it happened. Then there was the effect. And the effect impact your thoughts. It added to your colored sunglasses. Maybe you closed your heart more. Maybe you had a completely different perspective on uh, dark-haired men with mustaches because the person that, that did this to you had dark hair and a mustache. So that, that added new coloring to your glasses. Uh, and so the wave after the effect impacts your entire future. You cannot change your future. You cannot see life through um, eyes that where there is no suffering, where you trust God until you take the blame away from God. You cannot take the blame away from God until you see that everything is cause and effect and that your soul <clears throat> reincarnated you to deal with the ramifications of cause and effect. It may be your karma. It may be your ancestors. It may be collective group stuff. What matters most is not being attached to it. What matters most is seeing it and working through it, letting go of the attachment, you know. Okay, I may have created this. The person I am now obviously would not do something like that. But obviously learned my lessons. <clears throat> I can choose to react and be, you know, really, really upset, angry at God, separate from God, whatever I want to do. I can blame, put it outside of me, or I can look at it from an enlightened being's perspective, from a higher soul perspective. I can minimize the wave afterwards because that's what screws up our future. The cause comes, we don't see it through the highest clarity potential possible, and the wave afterwards creates a ripple effect that hurts us for a long time and it inhibits us from opening our heart. It inhibits us from being the love we want to be, from being the compassion, the light that we want to be. It keeps us from having love in our life because that last relationship hurt us so much. It keeps us from having finances because <clears throat> we may have lost everything. Blah, 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 blah. That's the story. And so we don't take that risk again. But if you lost everything, and you look at it from the eyes of the enlightened higher soul, <clears throat> the cause of losing everything could have been we earned that. So I choose not to respond negatively and blame outside of me. I choose instead to ask for forgiveness, to minimize all of the, the cause that brought it to me, to clear that debt as much as possible, and I choose to respond with love to all those that brought this unpleasant experience to me so that my wave going forward 
has the highest potential positive effect. It's very, uh, <clears throat> it's very practical in many ways to just take off the glasses and say, I probably have not been looking at life the highest and best way possible. I probably have been bringing all of the things that I have learned up to this point that have caused me to have a jaded perspective, one that is not loving, compassionate, forgiving, one that is not accepting of others, one that is not filled with humility, one that has ego associated with it. I probably have been in defensive posture most of my life because it hurts. So we build up this defense which separates us from our Creator. How do we build trust in our Creator? <clears throat> we build it by recognizing first that Creator brought no problems to us at all. Somebody decides to leave you that you love, that is not the Creator's fault. Uh, you lose your house, that is not the Creator's fault. Bad relationship breakup, that is not the Creator's fault. Why, God, why did you do this to me? Very typical response. How do we build trust in the Creator? Acknowledge we are 100% of that same Creator. Not more, not less. We are a speck of that same divine light in our original sprouting off from Creator. You ever see those flowers where you go, and then they go, little, little things everywhere? That's us. It's round at first. That's our creator. <sighs> okay, beautiful souls, go experience life. God, why did you do this to me when something happens? We need to be responsible. Look back. My challenge to you is looking back in your life. Looking back and look at things differently. Take these awarenesses and see if there's a way you can look at that what happened to you differently. doesn't matter if it's a molestation. It doesn't matter. I, I, I have given these kinds of conversations before. <clears throat> and people say, well, yeah, but what about this? And it's like I give an example which applies to everything in life and they, they refuse on a mind level to apply the exact same wisdom to their subject matter. They're like, well, mine's completely different. You know, mine is a molestation, and this was somebody lost, you know, a million dollars in their house and, and their dog and their and their wife and blah blah blah. That's very, very different. No. The wisdom applies regardless of your trauma. You're a soul having a physical experience. Your soul desperately wants you to align. To the Creator. <clears throat> Miracles happen every day. Miracles happen all around you. you. When you wake up and you take in a breath, that's a miracle. When you walk outside and you hear a bird song or feel the sun in your cheek, that's another miracle. It's happening all around us, but we're so locked in to our sunglasses that this is all we can see. What pain am I going to experience today? How am I going to respond to that person? How am I going to respond to that boss? Or, or, you know, is my husband going to hit me today? Whatever it might be, okay? That's the sunglasses. Take them off. Look at things differently. You can impact your future by unwinding the past. You can unwind the past by doing the forgiveness practices, doing the things that Master Shah has taught us. Chant to serve others. Ask forgiveness. For every trauma that's happened in the past, cause and effect. Ask forgiveness. Look for the divine, um, because the divine never gives more or less. The percentage of the divine's love, the percentage of the divine's ability to positively impact you, is always coming at you 100%. It's not like, 
okay, I'm going to give this person 99% of my love and this person only 55% of my love and this person over here not only going to give him 3% of my love. It's not the way it works. Divine gives all of us equal love, equal miracle, if you will. But what inhibits us from receiving that is our sunglasses, our belief systems, our understandings that we have put up as our defense system that allows us to move through this world. But it is also keeping us from the highest purity that we're capable of having. It is keeping us from reaching higher layers of enlightenment. This is why Master Shah brought to us the ten da's. Greatest love, forgiveness, compassion, and light. Practice these, the greatest humility. <clears throat> Practicing harmony in our thoughts, in our words. Are we bringing harmony when we say gossiping? Or are we creating separation, right? How many of you gossiped yesterday? Is that har harmonious or is it not? Okay, when we uh, gossip, as a simple example, we are creating disharmony, cause and effect. Someone will gossip about you, creating disharmony in your life, possibly creating a relationship breakup, more heart pain. Why, God, why did you do this to me? Uh, well, over here, remember when you gossiped? Okay, God doesn't say that to you. It's just like we are souls having experiences. So let's take off the glasses take off the falseness, stop being so um, uh, stuck in our belief systems that we fail to see that we are the ones that separate ourselves from our Creator, not the other way around. <clears throat> Building up trust in God should not be so hard. Some of us, it's a non-issue. We're there, we're all in, 100%. But if you're one of those that are watching this, that might not be true for you. So. You have to stop uh, blaming, basically, uh, outside of yourself. Let's see what some of the comments are. Uh, Monica, it's been very difficult to detach from things that has been a part of you for so long. It's true. Taking, uh, I'm talking about when you're in grief. Yes, a lot of people. <clears throat> um, that's something I never asked. Get closer to God. Uh, I've been blaming God uh, for car breaking down, saying, oh God, why? Yeah, yeah, because it's an easy default. It's part of our training. So we have to reverse the training. So let's, uh, let me do a flow, and then we'll do, uh, I'll offer a blessing, okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to ask God, or someone from the soul world, to give us uh, a teaching. Excuse me. On this subject matter, of trusting the divine. How oh. this is your beloved divine. Some of you may not trust this flow. Some of you would like to trust it but are not sure. Some of you will trust it 100%. This is in relationship to your separation from me, or what many of you call source. How is it that this one can communicate? How is it that this information is accurate or not? This one has done those things he is suggesting. If I was to give him a percentage, it would be about 7% is all that he has cleared. In other words, he is 93% not awake. And yet, many of you have followed the teachings of Master Shah that he speaks on behalf of Master Shah. Many of you have employed the wisdom and it has served you. So why then is there doubt, lack of trust for me your creator. 
because, as was indicated, in early life you lost your connection to your original soul upon entrance into this third dimension. This uh, specific life is a very special time <clears throat> in which there is great contrast of darkness and light. And this great contrast creates great suffering and great opportunity. One begets the other. For the ability for one to wake up, to see life as it truly exists, requires the necessity to rattle the blockages free, to remove the veils of falseness. And at least at this time on earth, that is best accomplished by the activation of what is referred to as karma. <clears throat> In this particular life, at this specific time for Mother Earth, there are many that are experiencing tremendous lives of suffering, great depression and more is rampant on earth. This is partially because of the great opportunities for awakening that the suffering causes if the person and the soul are able to follow that opportunity. For when a karma brings a effect into this third dimension and that effect creates great pressure upon a person's life experience. That pressure very often forces that person to do things that awaken them, to make different choices that are different from the ones that no longer serve them to let go of old beliefs and accepted dogmas that have proven to not be effective for dealing with that particular experience. It is this life that is referred to as a life of suffering that is in fact a life of opportunity. And the amount of suffering is directly related to the amount of awakening. The amount of awakening is directly related to the ability to release all that has been learned that is not serving you and replacing it with that which causes you to no longer suffer. I have sent countless teachers to earth in countless eons of time, each with the same message of love each other. It is the opposite of this that has created the collective karma and the individual inability to love each other. This is the final frontier. It starts with loving self. In loving self, you are in alignment with me, your creator. When you are in alignment with me, you can love others. When you love others, you are in essence creating dramatic amounts of less suffering in your life. And when others love others, then the whole of Mother Earth is on the great trajectory of enlightenment into the next dimension. <clears throat> when it is all said and done and you return to my womb, you will have far greater understanding and appreciation. But until then, please know 
that I am in your heart, in your soul. I am always in you and with you, serving you unconditionally, free of judgment, free of criticalness, free of any dogma. Simply, I am love in you. Please find me, love yourself, and trust me to be there for you. I am and will serve you unconditionally. I am your beloved divine speaking through this uh, master. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so thank you divine, thank you for borrowing my mouth to deliver that message. I hope there were pieces of wisdom in that that served you. I'll have to go back and listen to it myself. There was um, some things I didn't quite grasp. Welcome Farzad, <clears throat> uh, and welcome also Shelley. So, if you came in late, I do recommend you go back and watch this from the beginning. <clears throat> it's one of those things where we need to um, constantly remind ourselves, because if we turn off this live stream and go out the door and go do something and a car accident happens, how do you respond? The wave of cause comes to that moment. The response will affect the rest of your life. And then tomorrow, when you get up and you spill the coffee and it runs onto your pants legs and it burns you, do you say, God! Blah, 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 blah. Or do you say, ow, that really hurt. There's cause and effect for everything. Maybe I'm not supposed to go to work right away. Maybe I had burned somebody else's leg. Regardless, I ask forgiveness. I'm going to put a smile on my face, move forward, do the best I can, not let a wave in front of me create a negative. <clears throat> How we react is everything. Do we take it personally? Is our ego involved? Do we look at it from the soul from a much higher perspective? We must release the veil, the sunglasses of everything that we've accepted as a um, what keeps us in a safe place or in a place of defensive protection and start looking at life from a little bit higher, more detached perspective not take things personally, not create waves after a cause brings an effect. And when we do not create waves after that cause brings that effect, we are in essence creating a future that is going to be far more enjoyable, far more filled with joy, love, money, and everything else you want because you're no longer vacillating on things that are not serving you. This in turn will naturally build up your trust in God and Creator who has always been there 100% gives each and every one of us the exact same equal amount of love, but our individual separation causes us to not think that. Okay? Change your thinking, change your connection to God. So, very grateful for the wisdom that has come to me today that allows me to serve you in this way. I hope it has served you. Uh, again, as with everything and every piece of information, regardless of who it comes from, we do run it through our filters. Accept, don't accept, completely up to you. But I do recommend uh, you read the books of Master Shah and listen to his wisdom again and again, for it carries some of the most profound uh, information that I've ever come across, far better worded than what I can share with you today. And at the very least, let that guide you, because that information is very, very pure. So thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you for sharing. I will be back tomorrow. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody.